kind of story, let me say a couple of words. We're grateful for many of us for how the election turned out, but I want us to go back to where we were last week. Here's the truth. I trust you not being any man. I trust you be completely and wholly in God. And so I wanted to share that with us. So let us move forward, uh, not, not looking for victory in person, but let us move forward knowing that we have the victory in Jesus Christ. I'm grateful tonight for a chance to continue this expectation moment. I know that God has blessed us in this season and in this time as we have continued to walk in trust and faith in him. And so for that, I am very grateful. I thank God for each of you who have been so consistent, so diligent, so committed to um, studying and staying in the word of God. Um, I think it was um, Minister Edwards who said today in regards to Brother Freddie Daniels, who would call in to Bible study in the afternoon class because he just wanted to hear the word of the Lord. Even into his body weekend, his desire for the Lord grew. And let it be, let, let it be our desire for God is so strong that it, this, that it, that it, it, it strengthens us in all situations. It doesn't have to be physical illness. It could be anything. But let us be strengthened by the word of God. Let us be strengthened by the power of God. Let us be strengthened by the presence of God and let us be joyful in him. We're going to continue tonight in the book of Galatians chapter 5. We have had a good time studying the word of God. We've had a good time um, engaging, and I have at least, and I hope that you all have as well, uh, in this fifth chapter, because in this fifth chapter, again, reveals to us um, several things. But one of the things it reveals to us is that the reality um, that we are free. And I want somebody to say that right now. I'm free. Now, our freedom is not in, in our, thank you, somebody. Uh, I'm free. Uh, I'm, we're free um, and, and from recognizing it. We're free, first of all, from the penalty of sin. That's what the Bible says in the book of Romans. That the ways of sin is death, but the gift of God is what? Eternal life. So we're free from the penalty of sin. But the seventh chapter of Romans says that we're also free that Satan no longer has authority over us because as we are in Christ, the Holy Spirit has authority. God has authority over us, and the Holy Spirit controls us. And so we're free from the, from the, from the power of sin. And so in that freedom, and this is what Paul is talking about in the church of Galatia, uh, there were those in Galatia who wanted to try to get the Galatians to subscribe to the law and then, and then later subscribe to um, um, Christianity. But Paul said that was wrong and false, and it really defeated the purpose or the, the, it, it, it defeated the, the, the reality of salvation. If you're going to get saved and then you're going to uh, do something else to enjoy your salvation, uh, basically Paul said that doesn't make any sense. What we have to understand is we are already free in Jesus Christ. And so in saying that in chapter 5, uh, he began to open the door again to talk about the liberty in Christ, not the liberty to do what we want to do, but the liberty to do what God has called us to do. And so he talked about that throughout the early chapter, early part of chapter 5. Uh, in chapter 5, beginning in verse 16, he uh, uh, illuminates for us the reality of of, of uh, how would I say it, that the wrestling match, as, he, as Paul had already said in chapter 6 of Romans, he re- said that, that the lust of the flesh the desires, or the desires of the flesh and the, and the desires of the spirit were at odds. And so Paul said, then let us walk in the spirit. He said, let us, let our faith, verse 16 says, I say then, walk in the spirit. If you walk in the spirit, what does that mean? Let your lifestyle be guided by the Holy Spirit. Walking in, by, in the Bible context, uh, context is always about living. So he's saying live in the spirit. <clears throat> and as you live in the spirit, he says, you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. As you are, are deliberate and conscious of the Holy Spirit's presence in your life, and if you are deliberate and conscious of the Holy Spirit's guidance in your life, that would move you to the place where you are living or walking in the spirit. And Paul says if you do that, you should not, lust, not fulfill the lust of the flesh. It doesn't say your flesh won't desire. It means you won't fulfill it. You won't succumb to what your flesh wants. Um, he, he outlines, exactly, and i got to do it again, verse um, um, 19, he outlines the works of the flesh. What are they, Paul? Um, and he said they're evident, they're clear. This is New King James Version. He says that adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like. He said, which I've already told you, and I'm telling you again, that those who practice, and this word practice means live in, who, who this is just their lifestyle, he says, such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Those things will not bring you to a place where you inherit the kingdom of God. That's what Paul is saying. But in verse 22, he gives us some good news and gives us some encouragement and some inspiration and instruction. But the fruit of the Spirit, I love it, the fruit of the Spirit is love. We talk about love. 
the love for God and love each other. We talk about joy that comes from the contentment of being delivered from the penalty and the power of sin and ultimately looking forward to being delivered from the from the presence of sin. That's what brings joy. Peace comes again from the contentment that all is well with us and God because of God having given us a relationship, allowed us a relationship with God with him through Jesus Christ. Long suffering is that patience on steroids, is that patience that endures through circumstances and situations, but our temperament doesn't change. Gentleness and self-control is how we speak to people and how we act toward people. Tonight we're just going to touch on one, <clears throat> faithfulness. Um, I love this concept of faithfulness. Somebody say faithfulness with me, faithfulness. Um, as we have talked about these things, we recognize the fruit, and wherever it is, grows in the climate, uh, that is blessed with this abundance of the spirit of the word. In a spiritual sense, what causes fruit to, to blossom and to grow is that we, that we allow ourselves to be in a place where we are open to the Holy Spirit and that we are in the word of God. I had said that this week, and let me say it now. As we, somebody says, well, how can I uh, bear these fruit in my life? How can I bear this fruit in my life? Here's what we understand, that in a natural sense, <clears throat> fruit, whatever it may be, it may be, a watermelon patch, it may be a peach tree or apple tree or apple orchard, whatever it is. There's an environment that sets the table for that fruit, that tree to be fruitful. Um, I, I know that some fruit requires more rain than, than than sun, and some requires more sun than rain, but they all require a rich soil so the roots can grow deep and grow strong, and then they all require some, some transformation of photosynthesis. In other words, there has to be enough sun so that the so that as the sun is present, they cause the photosynthesis that allows these trees to grow. In a spiritual sense, the environment is the richness of earth, but it's not the ground. It's the richness of, of, this, of the word of God. In other words, the word of God is that which we should be planted in. But it also requires photosynthesis. What does that mean? Exposure to the sun. What sun? The sun outside? No, exposes to Jesus. And how do we find Jesus? In his word as well. But also through uh, engaging him through our praise, through our worship, and through our prayer. That's how we engage in with God through Jesus Christ. And so let us understand that we can't sit at home and hope fruit comes out of us. We have to be engaged in praying, praising God, worshiping God, and in the word of God so that we may have the right environment for fruit to be born. And so tonight we're talking about faithfulness. And, and it's not just, and I want to define this openly, it's faith, but it's faithfulness. In other words, it's an operation that comes out of our faith in God which is then initiated or moved in us by the power of the Holy Spirit that bears itself out in our trustworthiness and dependableness to both God and man. Um, the word faith is kind of, um, it, it means, it's, it's kind of using the sense of fidelity. Uh, it, it tells us that the Christian should be faithful, a man, a faithful woman, faithful to the word of God, faithful to our word and our promises. This, uh, this faithfulness that Paul is talking about is a person who can be trusted or confided in. Uh, because of who they are and who they are to the Lord. Uh, faithfulness is, is, is the word is used because the object of, the, of, of Paul here now is not to talk about feelings, but it's talking about actions, which we have toward God and then toward each other. This, this top conversation of faithfulness, is it comes as a result of a certain walk and also comes as a certain in, in, in interaction that we have constantly with God. If you let's say for example you have a faithful friend, what can you do? That means you can de depend on that friend, account on that friend to act not only um, expeditiously, not not just on time, but also faithfulness means that they're going to be dependable and they're going to be available. God has called us as Christians to have this level of faithfulness as a result of His faithfulness to us. God calls us, and this is interesting to show this same dependability toward others. It doesn't mean that we got to take on a whole lot of extra stuff, but it does mean that when God has placed somebody in our lives or placed us in a place that in which we need to execute what God has given us to execute, we need to be what? Faithful and trustworthy to God so that then we our faithfulness and trustworthiness to God as executes or manifests itself in our faithfulness and trustworthiness to others. God is faithful, so God is calling us to be faithful. God is faithful to whatever promises he makes, he's faithful to whatever contracts he has. God requires that of us, that we be faithful as well. We can't really be Christians who are not faithful and dependable in what God has called us to do. And we shouldn't do it. And I'm going to say this right here. We shouldn't do and be faithful because we think somebody's watching. We shouldn't be faithful because we feel like it's, we can get an award or get praises from man. We should not be faithful because we 
um, are expecting something in return. We should be faithful simply because God is faithful. And let me pause parenthetically. And if I can be transparent for a moment, all of these are, remember, all these things that are listed are fruit that should be bared out in our lives. Now, two reasons that Paul told, God told Paul to tell us this and tell the church of Galatians this and us. First of all, God wants us to be aware of what he expects to come out of us as a result of what he has placed in us. That's the Holy Spirit. Now, the reality is some of us may struggle with these things, but here's what I said all week. It's not ours to pick or choose. If you realize that you're weak on one of these, guess what? That's something for you to be prayerful about. That's something for you to be um, um, engaged God about so that you can have that fruit as well. God didn't want you to bear some fruit. God wants you to bear what? All, the, the fruit. He wants you to bear all of these things. He doesn't want you just to be um, have joy. He don't want you just to have love. He don't want you just to have peace. He don't want you just to have long-suffering kind of things. He wants all of these things in our lives. So if you look at yourself, if you've got a tree and you realize that tree is not bearing fruit, listen to this now. And, and, John, and Jesus said this in John 15 and 15. If you realize that this is something that you are not accomplishing, as you would a tree or a plant that's not bearing fruit, that needs to be some pruning. And so let us be aware that the fruit is in us. Don't worry about that. Worry about it being made manifest in your life. And so, in, and I'm saying transparently, this is the area that I pray to God to make me more, uh, manifest this more in my life. God, if you gotta prune some away from me, prune it. If you gotta take some away from me, do it. Whatever it takes, Lord, I do want to be faithful. I want to be faithful to you, but I want to be faithful and dependable and trustworthy to others that are all around me. And so, let us be prayerful. How do we pray? How do we prune ourselves? By calling on the pruner. That's, that's, who, that's how we prepare ourselves. That's how we prune ourselves, by calling on the pruner. God, Fix me. And it's okay to say that, St. Peter and friends. It's okay to ask God to change us, to strengthen us, to make us better. Because we ought to want to be better, and the only one that can make us better is God, and through our trust and dependence on him in Jesus Christ. And so that being the case, as we look at this word of faithfulness, of fidelity, or dependability, or trustworthiness to God, that God knows we're going to carry out what he says, but also that we are dependent. Other people look at us as being faithful and trustworthy friends. What happens is, just like with love, just like with joy, just like with peace, just like with long suffering, gentleness, and kindness, it counts toward it, it counts toward glorifying God. Think about if you're a faithful friend and somebody's not in Christ, but you're a faithful friend anyway. Guess what? They will see what God has placed in you, and again, it's a light that shines through us and in us and comes out of us that causes others to want to know again. What must I do to be saved? And so as I say this tonight, as I close tonight with these words, I want us all to be very careful and aware of whether we are not, whether or not we're bearing fruit. God has, he has, he has instructed us to do these things. He has equipped us to do these things. It's up to us to be aware and careful so that these things, all these things we discussed in the last several days are manifest. In other words, they come out, they bear themselves out in our lives. God is not um, satisfied with just the instruction. God is not satisfied by just the fact that we're equipped to do it. God wants us to manifest themselves in our lives. Let me tell you one, I get one quick story in. Um, I was reading an article about a young man who was a tremendous athlete, a basketball player. He could run. He could jump. He was tall. He was strong. He could do all these things. But his coach was constantly frustrated with him because um, he could do these things just randomly when he felt like it, but when he didn't feel like it. Um, he wouldn't do it. And so despite the fact that he was a very, listen, this very valuable to the team, eventually the coach's frustration with him not performing up to par caused the coach to take him and put him on the bench. Well, the team lost the first three or four games, and some of his teammates wanted him to get back engaged and come on back to the team, but the coach would not back down until the person came to the realization. Then the young man came to the realization that he was not doing all that he could do with all that he had been equipped to do. And so finally he came to the coach and said, Coach, listen, I know I can shoot the ball, and I don't shoot all the time. I know I can block shots, and I don't block shots all the time. I know I can make steals or, or play defense. I can do these things, Coach. I know I have not Coach, please um, work with me so that I can perform at a level that's satisfactory. And I want us to go to the coach. Go to the coach. Who's the coach? God is, is the general manager, and he's given us a coach in Jesus Christ who has done all these things. Let us go to the Lord when we realize we're not operating on these levels. Say, Lord, do what you need to do with me so that I may perform at a level in, in, in you that is pleasing to you and, and, and beneficial to man. Lord, Please use me in such a way and, and, and work with me in such a way that I may be pleasing to you and beneficial to others. Lord, use me in such a way that I'm a light in the body of Christ. I'm a light to others. I'm a light to the world. But most of all, Lord, that you can smile on me because of what I do. I'll pause with that tonight, with that little anecdote tonight. But let us 
Let us not just look at these words, love. Let us not just look at joy. Let us not just look at peace. Let us not just look at uh, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. But let us be careful and aware and deliberate that these things are being born out in our lives. Let us be prayerful. Let us be confident in the word that God can fully use us so that I hit the fruit that he has placed in us we will be born out and that others will benefit us. Just like if somebody walks by and gets the peace and bites in that peace and enjoys the flavor and the, and the, and the benefits and the nutrients thereof, let people walk by and, 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 in, and come into contact with us, let them benefit from what God has placed in us. I'm going to stop tonight. I pray that you will make sure that you sign in on tomorrow. I want to thank all of you this week who have participated in the homegrown celebration we've had um, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I know the families are blessed by your presence. I want to thank the ushers. Let me give a special shout out to the ushers, uh, those who sang the praise in the day. The deacons were fantastic. Deaconesses, all of those, Mother B and the other mothers who came, thank God for you. And I pray that God will bless you special, richly for your dependability in these things. I want to also as well. I um, want you to know that as we continue through this, this word, that God has taken us somewhere, and I want you all to stay on the ride. God has taken us somewhere deeper so that we can have a full, more full life in him. Let us pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, we say thank you for your word. Thank you for your love and your kindness in us. Thank you, Lord, for equipping us to bear the fruit that you placed in us, Lord. Thank you for not just instructing us, that we should bear fruit, but you're equipping us by the power of your Holy Spirit to bear fruit in our lives. I pray, God, tonight that you let these words, these words, and this word tonight, let it get in our ears so we can hear it all the time. Faithfulness. Let it get in our feet so that we can walk a faithful walk. Let it get in our hearts so we we'll have a faithful heart to you and faithful heart towards those you place in our lives. Let it get in our in our in our ears so in our minds so we can think faithfulness to you and think faithfulness to, to others. And let us let it get in our our mouths so that we can declare, even when we get a little weird, we can declare that we need to be faithful, that we can declare to the world that the importance of faithfulness, that we can declare to each other the importance of faithfulness, and that we can declare to ourselves that faithfulness to you, Lord, is important and faithfulness to others. I pray, God, tonight that what you would do is bless every household that's represented, every family that's represented. And beyond that, Lord, I pray that you bless every individual on these phone lines and on the Zoom lines tonight by your love and by your power. Bless strengthen and keep. Prepare hearts and minds for a celebration on tomorrow morning. God, we still love you. We still thank you and we still praise you. And it is now, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Let me see.